Welcome to the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup, bringing you all the latest action from match day 33 in the Cinch Championship League 1 and League 2. Coming up, Dundee United move a step closer to clinching the title with a big win at Capilo. Annan move out of the relegation playoff spot thanks to a 4-2 victory over Cove Rangers. And Bonnie Rig Rose boost their survival hopes with an outstanding 4-1 win at Bayview. Capilo was the venue for Friday night football as Morton welcomed league leaders Dundee United. Tony Watt looking bright in the early exchanges for the away side. The visitors were well on top from the off and managed to make the breakthrough inside 20 minutes. Captain Ross Doherty's back post header making it 1-0 to United. The United skipper with a massive goal in the context of the title race. And having found a way through, United would go on to double their lead just three minutes later. Glenn Middleton this time, with the winger firing beyond Ryan Mullen to make it too. The Championship's assist king grabbing his fourth league goal of the season. Morton would go close to pulling one back before the break, but Robbie Muirhead's strike from outside the box trickled beyond Jack Walton's post. And the away side would go on to further assert their dominance after the break, Louis Moult adding his name to the score sheet in the 51st minute. Seventeen championship goals this season for one of the division's top strikers. And United would make it 4-0 just seven minutes later. Striker Watt capitalising on a moment of indecision from Jack Baird and slotting coolly beyond Mullen in the Morton net. The league leaders showing their best form at the tail end of the season. But the home side continued to fight and managed to pull a goal back just beyond the hour mark. A cross not fully dealt with, with Muirhead there to turn home in the second attempt. A small lifeline for the home side with just under half an hour to play. Morton continued to attack late into the game but couldn't further add to their goal tally. Lewis McGrattan, the latest player to be denied. United kicking off the weekend with a big away win. Air hope to get back to winning ways on home soil against bottom side are both. The honest men in the ascendancy early on, with Francis Amarty calling Max Boric into action. Air's early pressure would continue with the hosts winning a penalty kick on 23 minutes after Kurt Willoughby was tripped just inside the box. And it would be Willoughby to step up and power beyond Boric for 1-0. The Englishman bagging his third goal for the club. And it wouldn't be too long before Ayr added a second. 32 minutes on the clock, when Willoughby turned smartly in the box, with Boric making a good save, only for Frankie Masonda to mop up. A second league goal of the campaign for the Zambian international. It was one-way traffic in the first half, and Ayr were handed a second penalty kick of the half when Harry McHugh was filled in the 41st minute. Anton Dowds took this one. He confidently rolled the ball beyond Boric to make it three before the break. The striker is having a good season in front of goal. This his 12th in all competitions. 
Clear-cut chances were hard to come by for our broth, but Adam McKinnon went close to pulling one back before half-time, only to be denied by Joshua Clark. Into the second period, and Ayr would press hard to increase their lead. A smart pass from Jamie Murphy, sending Ben Dempsey through on 68 minutes, with the midfielder finding the net. The honest men out of sight, with 22 minutes left to play. Ayr went close to making it five, after good work from Logan Chalmers, but striker Dowds couldn't finish from close range. But Dowds and Chalmers would combine for Ayr's eventual fifth goal, the striker returning the favour in the 90th minute, with Chalmers making no mistake. A big performance from the home side, and one which sealed our growth's relegation to League One. Two playoff chasing sides met at the Excelsior on Saturday. Dunfermline with an early attack, but Josh Edwards couldn't find the net after Robbie Hemphrey narrowed the angle. Both sides had their chances in a fairly even first half. Patient play around the box from Airdrie here, with Charlie Telford just unable to keep his strike down. Gabby McGill continues to be a good attacking outlet for the Diamonds. He went close to opening the scoring, but was denied by a good stop from Dennis Mehmet. But the home side would make the breakthrough before the break. Dean McMaster pulling the trigger from outside the area on 45 minutes and finding the net with a thumping finish. McMaster's first senior goal was certainly one to remember. Airdrie would push to add to their lead after the break. Captain Adam Frizzell picking out Nikolai Todorov with a cute ball, but the striker well kept out by Mehmet. Dunfermline though would level things up on the hour mark. A well taken corner kick finding Malachi Fagan Walcott at the back post to equalise. The unknown Cardiff City defender with his third goal for the club. Parity would last just three minutes. The Diamonds re-establishing their one goal advantage on 63 minutes when Gavin Gallagher finished from close range. The teenager grabbing his first goal in senior football. Dunfermline would battle hard for a leveller late into the game, with young midfielder Andy Todd going closest just before time. Airdrie all but sealing their playoff place with a crucial home win. Hampden Park was the venue for a key battle at the bottom of the table. Cali going close to an early opener when Cami Kerr fired just over from a free kick. The opening goal though would come from a set piece situation. 25 minutes on the clock when Cameron Harper stepped up and curled home this beauty to make it 1-0. An exceptional strike from Cali's talented fullback. Queen's Park found chances hard to come by in the first half of this one. Ruri Payton finding himself limited to strikes from range. The home side would begin to get a foothold in the game after the break. Killian Sheridan's fizzing strike well held by Mark Ridgers. The Spiders were determined to try and salvage something from the match. Jack Turner having a shot well saved by Ridgers, with Stuart McKinstry unable to turn home on the follow-up. The chances kept on coming for the hosts after the break. Patient play from Peyton creating an angle for a strike, but denied by a good block from Wallace Duffy. And Cali had a chance to punish Queens for their missed chances as Billy Mackay went through, but Callum Ferry did well to keep his side in the game. Queens Park would throw everything at the Highland side late on, with Liam McLeish picking out Peyton in the area, but his shot just too central. 
Inverness hanging on to give their survival hopes a huge boost. Wraith Rovers aim to keep their title hopes alive at home to Partick Thistle. The away side with an early opportunity as Brian Graham latched onto a cross in the Wraith box. Zach Rudden came into this one hunting his first goal since early April. The striker going close to making it 1-0, but well kept out by David Mitchell. Aidan Fitzpatrick is a player capable of producing the spectacular. The winger almost finding the net from distance, but his deflected shot kept out by the crossbar. Teenage wide player Xander McKenzie has looked bright for the Jags this season. He was denied his first senior goal by a good stop from Kevin Dabrowski. There were chances at both ends in this one. Neat work from Wraith down the left, with the ball breaking to Sam Stanton in the area, who fired just over. Both sides continued to create chances late into the game. Harry Milne nearly catching Dabrowski out with an outside of the boot strike but the keeper did well to deny the fullback. And the woodwork would play its part for the second time in the game late on. Blair Alston's free kick rattling the crossbar right at the death. The spoil shared after a goalless draw at Starks Park. Here's a look at the latest standings in the Cinch Championship after match day 33. Dundee United moved six points clear at the top of the table after their Friday night win at Capilo. Airdrie put nine points between themselves and fifth place Dunfermline after their win at the Excelsior. And Cali Thistle leapfrogged Queen's Park into eighth place after an impressive away win in Glasgow. Two sides embroiled in playoff battles at either end of the table met at Galabank. The away side with a good early chance, as Ramon Burrell was denied by Greg Fleming. Chances cropped up at both ends of the park in the early going in this one. Benjamin Lusson well kept out by Cove stopper Ballant Dimas here. And it would be the home side who would open the scoring in the 23rd minute. Willie Gibson's corner being powered home by Tommy Goss for 1-0. The striker showing just how dangerous he can be inside the box. The home side began to take control of proceedings and would make it 2-0 just five minutes later. Another corner kick, this one turned home by Matty Douglas. The defender notching his third goal since the turn of the year. But the home side wouldn't have it all their own way. 32 minutes gone, when Kyle Connell pulled one back for the away side after a mix-up in the Annan defence. The striker taking his personal tally to eight goals in all competitions. Set pieces continue to play their part in a busy first half. Cove bagging an equaliser as Josh Kerr headed home from a corner kick on the stroke of half-time. Impressive fighting spirit on show from the Toonsers to level things up. But Annan would regain control after the break as they hunted down a third goal. Goss close to grabbing his second, but Demas was wise to the header. Annan's hunt for number three would come to fruition on 67 minutes. How about this for a strike from Lusant to re-establish the Galabankis' lead? An outstanding strike, Lusant's third league goal of the season. And Annan's positive attacking play would reap further rewards before the end. Josh Walker with neat play and a tidy finish for 4-2 in the 80th minute. A huge performance and result in the Galabankis' fight to avoid the drop. Queens aim to bolster their survival hopes at home to already relegated Edinburgh City. 
Kieran McKechnie with an early sight of goal for the home side. The hosts were well on top in the first half at Palmerston. Neat play from Queen's in attack here, with Gavin Riley just unable to finish after good work in the box. City's best chance of the half would come through nice play down the right. Momadou Sambu though, unable to finish from close range. Queen's continued to look the more likely to score after the break. Alex Ferguson with excellent skill to create a chance, but the shot well stopped by Rory Adams. Striker Riley is enjoying an impressive season in front of goal for Queen's. The Dunhamer's local hero hitting his side a goal up on 65 minutes. An excellent cross from Lewis Gibson with Riley on hand to finish. And having found the opener, Queen's pushed hard to add a second. Paul Mackay making it 2-0 to the home side from a corner kick on 86 minutes. A brilliant glancing header which left Adams unsighted in the city net. With momentum on their side, the Dunhamers pushed for a third before the end, but couldn't find the net as Ferguson went close. A massive result for Marvin Bartley's men. Sterling came into this one aiming for their first away win since early January. Callum Crane with an early effort, which was easily gathered by Kyle Gourley. The opening goal would come on 33 minutes, with Kelty scoring from practically their first shot from open play. Stefan McCluskey adding the finishing touch to a neat move. The experienced attacker with his very first league goal for the club. Sterling's best chance of an equaliser in a quiet first half came from a first-time strike from Adam Cummins, which was well kept out by Kelty keeper Gourley. Kelty would aim to add to their lead before the break, Lewis Moore latching on to a loose ball, but his strike blocked by Sterling's Jordan McGregor. Sterling continued to battle in search of an equaliser after the break. This Kieran Offord strike, an easy gather for Gourley. But the best chance of the second period would fall the way of the home side. Attacker Moore charging his way into the Sterling box, but losing his cool at the crucial moment. Sterling kept fighting till the end, but found their chances limited, with this Dale Carrick effort the closest they'd come to an equaliser. Kelty all but securing their League One status with an important home win. Two sides chasing the playoffs faced off at the Rex on Saturday. Montrose on the attack early on, with Kane Hester well closed out by the Alloa defence. Alloa's young attackers have been impressive all season long, but neither Bobby Wales nor Quinn Coulson could break through the Montrose backline here. Clear-cut chances were hard to come by for Montrose in the first half. This turn and strike from Hester, an easy catch for PJ Morrison in the Alloa net. Montrose's next crack at goal would prove more awkward for Morrison. The Alloa keeper though doing just about enough to deny Michael Gardine. But the away side would begin to create better opportunities after the break. Craig Brown's cross finding Matthias Machado, who was well stopped by Morrison from close range and Montrose would have one last chance to snatch the points at the death. Brown arriving late in the Alloa box, but Morrison again doing enough to stop the shot. 0-0 the final score, an Akeji affair at the Rex. Lugano the Kavak, Rose, Jesse Anna Padgett, go for Jonas, and here's Chetit Kalgamach, 
Müller of Nesci Fallad, Grishig of Fallad, he uses the box set. Müller, Tully Yachin, and Haraka to get Sabaluk, but Dean Linus. For you to Hamilton, Nesci Williamson in the vault, Fallad, Gena Asif, and the box set, Kinta Henderson, Eschen Gaaka and Nesci, they got him with the Sabaluk skinner. Gurdic got Makinavith, Spencer Kane and Ash, Nesci to Müller, Müller, Tully Yachin, Arpeg is Sabaluk, and Sabaluk on the hand for Linus. Hapurunga. Grey Manion, a half stick at Kata Henderson. Nash, Balashach doing it. The box of rolls on the hand, Nigga says Shachat to the first, Nigga Shachat in the back of Tashing, Nigga's come out. It was McCann Collish, Miller, Hall of Target! Then it goes Shachat and Ischia, Shachat Nish, the Ross Machiavid. Love to tell you, Kekasin. Gonna tease and it goes head and you're just back to good and hush on the hill. The still yard, sorry to you. This matter of the meal of the Kunaskin is straight for Ratash of the Yemelin Kunhals League. Can you just back? Curm on the hill, plus a good hill. Look at Saka Savile in the hand for Nicky Gore and Hogar. Kaskul for the Falav, Hatati, Modestan, Mustan and Fishig Falav. Look at Sah, Oh Nicket, look at Ethan Ross, do we yes, Uncle Ross, hey, here. Ross in the middle of the box, Jack the mother stand. I can't even see what I can Ross is taking it. He was saying Shachet. The listeners have been listening in intently. They'll understand that I've said Calvin Miller's name more than anyone else. That's just because I've enjoyed watching him playing. He didn't enjoy getting taken off. But oh, caught him on the hill. Nesbitt to stay. He was Nesbitt to tell. Because he gave him a good match as a jamming. He was straight. You and I can get this back. Good count on the Viga Hoon in the days and say, come on, it's all good. King Jeff. Here's how things stand in the Cinch League 1 table after match day 33. Champions Falkirk extended their lead at the top to 22 points after an impressive win at Hamilton. Kelty Hearts have all but secured safety after their home win over Stirling Albion. And Annan Athletic are up to 8th place thanks to a spirited 4 2 win over Cove Rangers. He's eliminated about half the Bonnie Rig team there as he played Newton down the line. He's still making his way to the box, gets it in. Oh, just wouldn't quite sit up. Shepard still trying to make space. Newton floats it towards goal. And it has in! What a finish! Alan Clouton's 7th goal in the last 10 matches! He's the 4th man in the league! Go short with it. Curry's cross. And it's in. Martin Newt got the flick and it'll stand this time one all. Ball drops into the penalty area from the free kick. They hook it back. What a chance! And they're taking the lead for anything. Well, it's just a simple punt from the free kick. Delivered back across. Watson gets the better of Newton, he's going to go for it, oh it's rattled the bar and it must be in on the rebound, yes, it's Barrett, well what a turnaround, long range effort, crack the bar, a bit of a slip there, oh but again he's swimming all kinds of trouble, it's Connolly, they've just been pierced open here, big stop from Fleming. Another long throw, causing his swift bowler again, and it's off the post. Oh, he's swiping all kind of trouble again. Barrett, Alan Fleming saves. Well, Barrett just seemed to slow down. He's run a little bit. Decent delivery. It's four. It was header from Kerry Young. I think it might have come off Barrett last, but that's game over. And East Fife's playoff chances are in tatters. It was second versus seventh at Balmour on Saturday afternoon. Forfer with a bright start to the game as Josh Skelly hunted down the opening goal. Peterhead's best chance of a quiet first half would come from a corner kick. Ryan Strachan's eventual effort, though, being sent well over the top. Peterhead's opening goal though would come from a corner kick. A wayward delivery being sent back into the area 
with a goalmouth scramble seeing Hamish Ritchie eventually poking home on 49 minutes. A composed finish from Ritchie after a stramash in the fourth of box. The away side would look for a quick response after going a goal behind. A deep cross from the right finding Kieran Ingles who couldn't beat Stuart McKenzie in the blue tune net. But the Loons would level things up on 71 minutes. Thomas Brindley's cross from the left misjudged by the Peterhead stopper with Daniel Scally there to head home. Scally on target for the first time since returning to the Angus club in February. And having equalised, Forfer pressed to snatch all three points. Striker Skelly leading the charge in this attack, but the shot well saved by McKenzie. And Forfer would live to rue that missed chance late into the game. 80 minutes on the clock when Jack Brown danced his way into the Loon's box and restored Peterhead's lead. An excellent finish as the Blue Toon extended their unbeaten run to six matches. Newbury does well. Still got it, Newbury. Plays a ball through to Pinitello. Pinitello the outside of the foot. Driving forward. He's got Wallace to the left and he gives him it. Tony Wallace coming forward. Does well. Pinitello picks up. Plays a great ball through to Hilton. Hilton now coming forward. Driving forward. Into the box. It's a goal! Oh, and a great shot there by James Hilton. Cabia crosses it in. Headed on and away by Malcolm. Cuddy, but Grey does well with a foot. Only as far as Cabia. Cabia crosses it in. Hogarth and over the bar. Hogarth goes long. Yet again caught up with the wind. Comes all the way back more or less. And it's a shot. And off the post. Picked up by Jordan Allen inside the box. It's a shot. And in the hands of Hogarth who does well. Linus trying to play it forward. Bit of miscommunication by Howie. And it's Hilton. And oh, no, a great shot by Hilton. Plays it long. He's trying to find Hilton, but it's away by Sula. Tussling Gray and Cuddy. Gray comes out better off. Finlay Gray trying to play it forward. The pins find the tail. Pin the tail of the shot. And just by the post. And a great effort. And probably the best chance of the game. Just awaiting the referee's whistle. Hilton. With a shot, James Hilton! Oh. And what a goal by James Hilton! From Barton 1, Clyde 0, and what a goal by the way! Tremendous flight from James Hilton. Use the wind to his advantage, drop this. Just in, in front of a smattering of Elgin City fans who've made the journey down, and a long one it is, of course. But an early opportunity here. Yates with the ball in, and it's not far away, the header. There's Billum with Jacobs in support. Drops for Yates, just trying to find a way through, and it might come to O'Reilly. If you haven't seen it, it's well worth a watch. It's Taylor on his left. And he gets his second goal for Stenhouse Muir. And the long run without a goal is finally over. And what a way to do it via the left boot. I think it still favours the attack in this situation, though. Big wall. And it's a really wonderful hit. Crashes Jameson's crossbar. And Taylor. Goes down this time under the challenge of Cairns. Collects yet another booking. During his time at Edinburgh City, he didn't have a pre-season at the start of this season. Here's Yates. Yates. Lovely feet. And he squares it for O'Reilly. But it falls for Yates. He's going to feel one of those. Yates again with the delivery. Falls to Lynch. It's off the line. And it's taken off Kirkpatrick's toes by his captain. He didn't hear the shout. Stay very high up the pitch and offer support. Jones brings it down and it's into the path of Golden. He's got time to pick his spot. 
And he's put it wide. Gallagher takes over. And finds Golding again. He's back for Cairns. Golding's there. Just a sea of bodies and it's smashed goalwards and it's into the net eventually. Jones with the equaliser. Jameson produced an outstanding stop to deny Russell Dingwall, but it fell into the path of Jones. Finds O'Reilly, it's through for Brown. And he's brought down by Cairns. And he collects his second yellow card. And sent off late on. Spartans aim to strengthen their playoff bid at home to bottom side Stranraer. An early chance falling the way of Cami Russell, whose nonchalant effort was easily kept out by Lewis Bidinoukis. In a first half of few chances, it seemed as though the first goal could prove pivotal. This thumping strike from Derren Lang, well stopped by Blair Carswell. League Two top scorer Blair Henderson scored twice at Borough Briggs last weekend, but he couldn't find the net with this back post header. Both sides continued to scrap in hopes of making the breakthrough in the second half. Ben Armour going close for Stranraer, but unable to find the net after some last ditch Spartans defending. The away side looked the more likely to score in a quiet second half but neither team was able to make the breakthrough in an even affair in the capital. Nil-nil the final score at Ainsley Park. Now for a look at the latest standings in the Cinch League 2 table after match day 33. Wins for both Peterhead and Dumbarton sees both sides continue to build momentum ahead of the playoffs. Defeat for East Fife has all but ended Dick Campbell's side's hopes of reaching the playoffs, while Stranraer's away point at Spartans has lifted the Blues above Clyde into ninth place.